Welcome to Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt of the Marquardt Law Firm at MarquardtLawFirm.com. Welcome back to Talk Law Radio. I'm Todd Marquardt on the radio, on Facebook, on YouTube, on TalkLawRadio.com. Um, we're talking about Medicare today, and I'm I'm just my phone is blowing up with messages because I I, I asked it, him to do that. I put it on Reddit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Discord. <laughs> so now um, one of my longtime listeners is saying that we need to talk about FEMA. Okay. Because of the all the flooding and yeah, the coast and everything and yeah, where the money goes. He's He's a follow the the money type of guy. He wants to see where the corruption is. Oh wow! Yeah, so we'll do that sometime soon, hopefully. Okay. But today we're talking about Medicare, and uh, you wanted to talk about my YouTube channel. I do. It really bothers me that you don't have a thousand subscribers yet. Shade. Because you can, you can, uh, <laughs> because you deserve it. You Thank were, you. you're the hardest working ethical lawyer out there. And then um, you give great information. And if you get a thousand, you can go live. That's right. And if you get a thousand and you get to go live, I'm going to give the viewers a choice. These are the options I present to you. I'll get bangs and dye them rainbow. Lexi will be dyed pink. Or you will bleach, like you will grow your hair out, bleach it, and do the, the 80s. Can I do the Ryan Seacrest where parts of it are bleached? Well, like <laughs> give the option. If you, get, if you get the chance to do a live, give the viewers an, an option. Okay, yeah, which, that's Which one great. of these things? Yes. Or, or maybe there's a better option yeah, well, out there. You, we can do a poll. Yeah. Mark is always asking me to do a poll. Yeah. We can do a poll on Instagram. Or eat the hot wings or something, like well, eat hot Well, some spice. of that's dangerous. <laughs> well, ours would be like pretty <laughs> basic. Okay. Like, do you eat yes. hot stuff? I do. I'm uh, from New Mexico. Oh, yeah, that's it, it's right. It's hot there, yes. Oh, we could do the, the taco taste test. Okay. The Mary's tacos and the tacos and salsa. Yes. Yeah. We may have to do that um, on location because uh-huh. uh, for us to go to Bernie and back right. in the morning yeah. might be a long drive. I'm really curious, though. I want to know if you can, because you said they were so good. They are. They have are you, good. Have you been there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're good tacos. It's awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit more about Medicare. Next question, will Medicare help pay for me to stay at home? In some limited cases. So home health care is covered under Part B in Mm -hmm. certain situations, and that's going to be a lot more uh, complicated than we probably have time to talk about. Following a hospital stay? Yes. Okay. Is there a limit to that Medicare home health benefit. So let's say they do qualify. Is Medicare going to come visit them at their home every day for the rest of their lives? No, they, there is, there are limitations on how much home health they will provide. Um, and it's based on circumstances and situation individual situations as to what those limitations are. The, the biggest myth, with Medicare that that I have seen, um, a lot of people come to me and they say, um, my loved one is in the nursing home, Medicare isn't paying anymore. How do we how do we pay the high cost of long term care if they need to stay there because uh, their medical situation is in is so complicated? They need to have a nurse 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, so I first want to ask about, in a long-term care setting, I guess we would call it skilled nursing following a hospital stay. Does Medicare pay for that? So Medicare does cover skilled nursing and rehab under Part A, but there are qualifications that you have to meet for them to pay that. They don't pay for custodial care. So it's, they pay for medical needs rehab, um, and they were limited to 100 days. So th- this is the semantics of the government, Shannon. Mm. Did you catch that? No, tell me again. When they changed the word from 
skilled care to mm-hmm. custodial care, mm-hmm. that's why Medicare doesn't pay for it. So you're still in the same bed receiving the same services from the nursing home, but they change the word from skilled to custodial. Mm. Well, s- custodial care is is like when people think of long-term care. Yeah. So dressing, bathing, feeding, toileting, so if transferring. You're saying if they're in skilled care, they can do all that stuff themselves? Not necessarily. See, that's but, my point. It's the same situation. But it's okay. I'm not mad at you. A really okay. good Reagan government quote would be so appropriate I'm, right now. I'm mad at the government. <laughs> I made this, I wrote a, a paper about it, inadequate government programs and the struggle for long-term care. Because in 1965, God bless them, people didn't live to be 100 years old spending decades in the nursing home. But now we do, and we're still using Medicare benefits as if it would cover all of that. Um, So if Medicare is not going to cover somebody staying... And we're sicker than we used to be. I mean, all numbers agree that we we just, as a nation, we are sicker. (laughs) Well, we work too hard. (laughs) (laughs) So if Medicare is not going to pay for it, what should people do to plan ahead? Long-term care insurance. insurance is the best answer as far as giving people flexibility to stay where they want to stay and have the funds to pay for it, but it's not cheap. Because you have to have assets to put into it. Doctors have figured out how to keep us alive a long time, right? So now we're just going to be alive with chronic health conditions memory problems, and we need a place to live. And maybe your little kids will be there to take care of you, but may, maybe you don't want them to. Yeah. My, my mom said, um, I don't want you to do that. Put me in the nursing home so that other people can take care of me. You can come and visit, but I don't want you to be my caretaker. Well, and that puts a big strain on the caretaker. The being yeah. a being a primary care provider for a loved one is very, very hard on that person. And what if they're working? What if they're taking their kids to band and orchestra and soccer practice? Then, then they have to take care of the kids and the parents all at mm-hmm. the same time. Yeah, that's where there there's a term called the sandwich generation right. because they're raising children and having to take care of their parents at the same time. So that's my soapbox. Um, I don't think the government meant to um, induce people to sign up for something that's not going to be everything that they need, but that's what happened. So I think we need to be out there telling them Medicare is not going to cover everything. Right, and it never was intended to. It well, was never but, intended to cover all of your medical expenses. Well, but if you talk to old people, they think it was. Yeah. <laughs> really? I mean, they say, "Why isn't this? Why isn't this covered?" I mean, don't they ask you, "Why isn't this covered?" Yes, sometimes. Yes. And um, by old, I mean anyone slightly older than me at this moment in time. <laughs> Let's ask another question. <laughs> it gets redefined. <laughs> yeah, the older I get, the, yeah, me too. the the higher the number has to be to yeah, be considered me, old. Me too. For sure. I'm at 80 right now. I'm like, yeah, okay. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is a Medicare savings program? So the Medicare savings program is a program for lower income and asset individuals where the Part B premium can be covered. Okay. And they don't actually have to pay the one seventy four seventy a month. Oh, okay. If they qualify for that program, but there are income and asset limitations on qualifying All right. for that. It's tied in with uh, like Medicaid, mm-hmm. because if people have low enough income and assets, they can apply for Medicaid. And if they qualify at a high enough level of Medicaid, then the Medicaid will pay for their Part A deductibles and coinsurance, their Part B premium, their or the uh, deductible and coinsurance, things like that. Okay. 
Am I limited by Medicare as to where I seek treatment? Well, the the short answer is yes. With with all Medicare, you are limited because you can only see treat seek treatment from physicians and facilities that take Medicare, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and not all of them do. Okay. Uh, but a lot of them do. So I hear I hear clients say uh, regularly, "Well, you know, I can't. There's there's no doctors that take Medicare. There are." thousands of doctors in the San Antonio area that take Medicare. But there might be one that they're running into that doesn't. Correct. Some doctors choose not to, and that's their right, Mm -hmm. and it's part of their business plan. Uh, But anybody on Medicare, the doctor has to take Medicare. Then if you are on an Advantage plan, then you have to to look at, you know, is my doctor in-network with whatever plan I'm choosing? And that's why when it, it's important for me to know who people see as far as doctors when I'm making a recommendation for an Advantage plan, because if this doctor is vital to their health and vital mm-hmm. to their situation, if they're not in network with a certain plan, then we probably don't want to use that particular plan. And that's why it's so right. tailored to each individual. I see. Well, this is our last segment. So with the last couple of minutes that we have for you, John, um, tell us what you think you want your legacy to be. Well, my hope is that perhaps one of my children will decide to follow me and and take over my business when I'm ready to retire. Mm -hmm. So that way I can know that they're being taken care of. Because if they do that, I'm going to train them how to do it and and what to do. But I'm also a general agent. So I have other agents that I'm training to do this and how to do it the way I do it. Because for me, it's about taking care of my clients. That's why every client gets my cell phone number, and I tell them, if you have a question, a problem, you get a bill, anything you don't understand, mm-hmm. call me first. Let me help. Because I'm being paid to do it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that I can build my, my agency and my agent force to do things the way I do to take care of as many beneficiaries That's as great. possible. Yeah, I that is that. so nice to know you're out there doing that. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, doing good work for good people. Yeah. Yeah, everybody has to do it. Everybody needs it, and it, it's really rewarding to me when I help a client and they say, you know, thank you so much. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what to do. Right. And you've just made my life so much easier and so much better. Awesome. Love to hear those client testimonials. Yeah. Shannon, uh, tell us about Yom Kippur. Oh, okay. It's today. It's right now. It's going on right now. So um, observant Jews are fasting right now. I'm I'm not Jewish, but I'm kind of like appreciative of the, mm-hmm. the the situation. So I'll probably fast till the end of the day, and then you have a break the fast, and it's a day of atonement. And what does atonement mean? Um, you want a, humans always get really far away from God, so atonement means you're closer, you're back in union with God. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you for that religious lesson today. <laughs> yes, get get close to God. Uh, That's it for today. I'm Todd Marquardt. This is Talk Law Radio. I'll talk to you later. This has been Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt, brought to you by the Marquardt Law Firm. You can learn more at marquardtlawfirm.com. And be sure to listen to the full Talk Law Radio show Saturday mornings at 11 on 930 AM, The Answer. Each week, attorney Todd Marquardt talks about the law. His mission with the Talk Law Radio Show and Podcast is to help you discover your legal issue blind spots. In the beginning, God had one law. Don't eat from the fruit of that tree. Then came the Ten Commandments. Now we have federal, state, and municipal lawmakers that won't stop creating new laws. Laws that might impact you without you knowing it. Listen to the show and drop a line on Facebook or email host at talklawradio.com and let the hosts know what you think of the show, the topics you want to hear, and whether you want to be a guest.